Now, I, I must confess, when I first read over this, this uh, detail completely passed me, I suppose it's partly the word and the language of it, but again, just in Henry's commentary, the lower places, uh, Nehemiah chose to post guards in the lower places in order that he might have a, a watch over the enemy there. But as the wall progressed, it, it obviously was built at a higher rate in different areas, in a slower rate than others. He also placed uh, men up on the top of the wall, as it were, with uh, bows and arrows and whatever weapons they would use. But they were rain down on the enemy. And if I have taken up right, Matthew Henry says that this shows the need for specifics, the need for planning. Nehemiah didn't just call the people out in one body to go and stand against the enemy. He looked at the actual survey of the territory and decided that there were different roads for different people. And that might pose a question to us how do we plan in the work of God? How do we plan in technical work? For example, when we look to carry out outreach and evangelism, how can we go about that so that it's most effective? I mean, are we going to necessarily, uh, this is an extreme example, but are we necessarily going to try and go into a, a Roman Catholic community with literature that is denouncing Catholicism in the strongest terms? Don't you think that those people need to hear the gospel? They need to, God will be brought out of that whole system. But how do we have our word seized with wisdom? How do we guard against the ways that the devil would come into the work and even use something as subtle as that. He could even use something, something as subtle as how people might react against a certain word or certain scripture. Are we not in our different ministries? I said it earlier, are we, are we trying to maybe have our hands in different ministries? Are we focusing on the one that God has called us to? And are we like the different members of the body are we in our roles those ministries complementing each other and working together supporting each other are those that are doing the evangelism well when people god willing if souls are brought in what sort of uh, do we have bible studies for them do we have um the likes of uh, what um ned and family are involved with in chemistry to foster not only to reach people and bring them over to the gospel, but to foster an interest in young people, to give them somewhere where they can uh, be ministered to, and they can come into a, a friendly environment, an environment where they're comfortable. These are things that we need to put into practice as well. Uh, the word of God, the word of God us to be disciplined, to be that fear goes. The enemy is focused. The enemy, our enemy is laser focused. He the not men on any chink in our arm or even the slightest thing. So therefore, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly for what, what we can imagine, but we need to pay attention to details as Nehemiah did, and we need to be objective and be organized. So, following on from this encouragement that he gives to the people, and this spur that he gives to the people, we see in 15, verse 15, And came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their house from the north that we returned all us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and shields and the bows. The virgins and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah, they which built the wall, and they which bear burdens. Those that were laid, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. And I think that refers in some respects to what I've already said. Uh, that you know the men of, of Judah they were on the one hand building, but they were also standing guard, they were also prepared. That's a matter of how we need to be. We need to be involved in work, but also be very wary because if the work is taking place and is fruitful, the enemy will try to pull it down. Uh, also, notice people didn't rest on a temporary victory. They didn't take it for granted that the enemy would give up because they knew. First Peter 5, 8-9 to 9, 
tells us to be sober about to be vigilant because our adversary the devil is as a roaring lion roaming around seeking to be made of iron who resists stand fast in the faith we can see i believe there's something of that principle here as well um, and of course one other point i want to make i've said this before now all of the people would have been involved in the work in one shape or another at that time very much so that men would have been involved in the work and women would have been involved in the work in different ways in those days but i'm assuming probably from the youngest to the oldest would have been doing everything they could but i don't think it would be naive to think that probably the men particularly the young men would have had a certain uh, specific role probably in terms of the heavy work and also in terms of bearing weapons and, and actually guarding the work and guarding the people as it was going on. Obviously, uh, the, you know, the, these men were stood with their, their weapons. Today, obviously Satan is, wishes to destroy Christians. In particular, I believe he wishes to destroy young Christian men. He wishes to take them away because they are a pillar of the church. He wishes to ruin the, the church's defences. He, and that's part of the reason he wants to effeminize the church. But he wants to come at young men in their development with all sorts of temptations and vices and everything to demoralize them and bring them down. And we see here as a picture of almost like a military type discipline and strength. And I think we need to keep that in mind today, it's particularly in terms of the, the young men in particular, to keep that. Uh, that formation, they, they need that discipline and they need that uh, that leadership under the word of God. We also, uh, again, we need to keep our relationships within that body. We see how they, the people were joined together here. They were, uh, we need to keep, we need to focus on relationships within the body more so than outside. We need to be wary of getting too involved with anyone who is not a Christian because that will start inevitably over time to draw us away from where we should be centered. Practically also, I think when the people were building, they also were obviously looking to the future. They weren't, this Nehemiah chapter four, as I say, it serves as a sort of a, a snapshot. Uh, there's a lot more to this book, and there's a lot more we can talk about. But they were, weren't building for the sake of their health. They were building in order to ensure that there would be a legacy here to future generations. There would be an encouragement. Um, I'll just read through the rest of the, the verses here. And say it all to the locals and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, verse 19. The work is great and large. And we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. And what place therefore you hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither on us, or God shall fight for us, look at the encouragement again. So we labor in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning, till the stars appeared. Likewise, at the same, ta same time, said I unto the people, let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard unto us, and labor on the day. So either I, nor my brother, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, neither was put off our clothes, saving that every one of us put them off for washing. Again, I sort of feel that it's underlining what perhaps we've already talked about, that we, they were conjoined, the people were joined together and supporting one another in this work that they took seriously, and then taking the precautions uh, to support one another. And as I said, they were building something that they intended to last. They intended it to be there for generations to come in the future. They intended it to be something that God would glory in, not as a, a temporary thing, not as a, a whim. This was to be the seat of the worship of God in Jerusalem going forth. And I think also we need to have that thought today um, that we can seek to build it sometimes in ministries and we don't maybe have a future vision we need to be looking to the future we need to be looking to our young people coming up and how do we, what sort of ministries do we set up 
that will give them uh, work to work with, that will encourage them, that will spur them forward. And we look at the future and it's, I mean, who knows what future years will bring them. It's not even, about, even I'm not talking about eschatology or anything, I'm not touching that at all. I'm thinking it's just, it's a just principle that we need to build and prepare for the future. There's a danger to some degree of something that, that the extremes of what's known as pietism in Christianity. And if I could sort of sum that up, I'm sure you've probably heard the saying before that so and so can be so spiritually minded that they're no earthly good. And I don't think you can make that claim about Nehemiah and the men and women that he worked with because they had been shown, I believe, here a vision of not only how to recognize the uh, attacks on the incoming assaults from the world and from the Prince of the Air, how to respond to it, both spiritually and practically. And of course, above all, needless to say, they were bathed in prayer and all the work that they undertook to do, uh, it was founded on their hope in, in the Lord and it was built upon his work and everything again of this chapter and everything in this book. It is not for any man's name, it is for the glory of God that the walls were rebuilt. So I think I'll, I'll just finish there. And thanks very much again. Thanks for your attention.